the Friday show brings along a guy who knows music, he knows movies, he is the culture blaster, he comes and goes on a rainbow. He's the great Michael Snyder, everybody. Hi, Michael. Sorry to make you wait. Thank you for being here. Well, I got to say, that was a marathon news segment. That was like massive. And I want to also point out that um, in terms of some of Kim's stories, it is a beautiful day in San Francisco. And Brock Purdy just plowed Polk Street behind me. I could not believe that. (laughs) It was, I was, oh my God. Is Uh. that a John Deere tractor? Uh, The the sun is out. The uh, shoplifters are in bloom here in the city. Later this afternoon, I will be selling off some uh, prized possessions to afford the Golden Gate Bridge toll coming back to the city after a show it's tomorrow. It's expensive. Night. They're trying to get the riffraff out, Michael. They don't want you At to. The, uh, they don't want uh, it to be too a, affordable. I am both riff and raff. Um, mm. Hey, um, how was your um, President's Day, Mark? Uh, well, I, I, it 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 was it was good, as I recall. Uh, why? What, what did you have to say about President's well, Day, Michael I, I, Snyder? No, I, I mean, considering the election coming up in November, it felt more like the President's Day to me. But, you know, oh, I get what you did. Yeah, right. uh, let's, yeah. let's get on. I mean, you pushed me into a corner here time wise. The weekend's movies of record. OK, most of them are replete with bad girls and criminal replete. doings. And please, uh, if someone would. Uh, thank you. Uh, Jeez Louise. All right, let's get down to it. Um, when I saw that Ethan Cohn of the movie making Cohn Brothers, uh, as in Fargo, No Country for Old Men, The Big Lebowski, uh, et cetera, et cetera, uh, that, that Ethan was the director and co screenwriter of the new Lesbians on the Road crime comedy, Drive Away Dolls. And when I saw that rising stars Margaret Qualley, daughter of actress Andy McDowell, uh, who, uh, and she was featured in Stars at Noon and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And Geraldine Viswanathan, an Australian ingenue from Blockers uh, and the Beanie Bubble, uh, that these were the titular dolls I was primed. Yeah. Then when I noticed that Pedro Pascal, Matt Damon, Coleman Domingo, Bill Camp, and Beanie Feldstein, uh, by the way, from Booksmart, were also in the ensemble, I was beyond stoked. Well, even without high expectations, I would have been disappointed by the helter-skelter journey. Wow! After that, build up, you're disappointed? The questionable stakes and the less-than-hilarious comedy that make it to the screen here in Drive Away Dolls, even with a cast that seemed all in, uh, with the shameless sexual elements offhand, (coughs) albeit often uh, often off-screen violence, and a prize... Uh, the MacGuffin of the movie uh, that seemed like a much ado about very little um, <laughs> uh, Quali and um, and Swanathon play best buddies uh, who go on a road trip when they come upon a very valuable suitcase filled with something that we don't really uh, learn about. We don't understand the contents until much later in the film. And they're traveling from, you know, the the Northeast down to Florida, uh, where they're supposed to deliver the suitcase. And there are criminals involved and there are uh, sexual perverts involved. And, you know, it sounds exciting. And, you know, the chemistry between uh, Quali and Viswanathan is absolutely palpable, and they're a joy to watch. And everybody kind of delivers their A game, but it's in the service of, like, a C-. minus. And I just felt, you know, it's hard for me to recommend Drive Away Dolls. By the way, uh, FYI, uh, the original— Palpable, by the way, Ding. Yeah, go ahead. Um, uh, the original title was Drive Away Dykes, but— um, Unfortunately, Ethan Cohen was told by the movie company or someone, nah, and so they read uh, Christian did drive away dolls. Do you think anyway, I, I, all, I'm not being trying to be funny here? You think that would have mattered? Uh, it wouldn't have made the in movie any of, better. It, it wouldn't have made the movie any better. But in terms of box office, you think people would have been, oh wow, it's just it's more, it's an edgier kind of title, probably. And no, right. they might have been more put off by it. Dolls seem oh, more enticing okay. than dykes to some oh, people, okay. I guess. All right. I'm I'm good with both dolls and dykes. Bring them on. I love them. Okay. Uh, All right. What what the, that's a miss. What about yeah, what's it's next? It's in, it's in theaters. Uh, so uh, you know, caveat emptor. You want to ding that, or do I have to explain it? Uh, I guess you're right. It's a ding. Go ahead. 
Okay, uh, it means um, uh, buyer beware. I don't um, think you need to explain what caveat emptor means to my audience. My all God. Right, fine. Why you, Moving have on. You watch the show. These are smart people watching the show. Why are you I, I love the audience. Uh, these are my people. Uh, Red Right Hand, not the Nick Cave song that's the theme to Peaky Blinders, but a gritty, somewhat predictable, but nonetheless entertaining crime drama. Uh, is most notable for the lead performance by the usually proper and eloquent Orlando Bloom. I mean, this guy played an elf in the Lord of the Rings movies. You know what I'm saying? But wow, here, he looks like a he's a stud there. Look at him. Here he plays Cash. Yeah, Cash, hot. not to be confused with your cat, Cash. Right. Cash is a down-home Kentucky dirtbag, right. albeit uh, <laughs> one who wants to turn his life around and protect his alcoholic widower brother his uncommonly smart teenage niece, and the mortgaged ranch where they live and farm. And then there's the villain of the piece, a local crime lord who's in fact a lady until she does something shockingly sadistic, which she does uh, over and over in the film. And she happens to be played by Andy McDowell, of all people, playing a, a like a sadistic crime uh, boss. Anyway, she is, in fact, Margaret Qualley's mama. So we have kind of a little uh, family yeah. situation going on. The whole family is in the, in the reviews today. All right. Yeah, actually, Andy's movie uh, struck me as better than uh, Margaret's, but it, you wouldn't have thought so. But uh, it's Orlando and Andy, as you've never seen them, and that really got my attention. You also get solid work by familiar character actor Garrett Dillahunt as a sort of action hero preacher and newcomer Chapel Oaks as Cash's niece, Savannah, and a decent climactic shoot 'em up which is important when you're going to have, a, you know, a movie about um, criminals and deceit and, and it, murder and theft and what have you. There is nothing particularly groundbreaking here, but I was diverted by Bloom and McDowell going at it in a, a Kentucky bluegrass frenzy. Uh, it's directed with workmanlike efficiency by uh, Esham Nelms and Ian Nelms brothers. Uh, lovers? I have no idea. But, you know, uh, Red Right Hand is in theaters and available on various streaming platforms. And, uh, you know, I thought it was worth my time. Not a great film, but not passable. terrible either. Okay. Yes, passable. Uh, right. Let's uh, actually raise the stakes a little bit. I know you're not a horror fan. But this is an interesting movie in the horror genre. You know the painstaking process behind stop motion animation? You know that situation? You know where you have models that you move a skosh, you photograph them, and you do it in deliberate fashion for thousands and thousands of images. And then when you string them all together, it's like uh, clay comes to life. You know the deal, uh, right? You know that sort of thing. You're you're familiar with stop motion. We're familiar with it. Thank you. Okay. There's a lot of uh, pain with or without staking uh, in the new British horror movie, Stop Motion, starring Eiling uh, Franciosi, whose recent work in the Irish drama God's Creatures was noteworthy to say the least. In Stop Motion, Franciosi plays Ella, an animation uh, uh, expert. I, You know, she's hard at work with her elderly ailing mother, whose stop motion movies have made mom a legend Uh, And that kind of has intimidated Ella, but she's there to assist. And circumstances lead to her starting to make her own somewhat spooky stop motion project inspired by a mischievous little girl in her apartment building. And that's when things start going seriously wrong, including her relationship with her supportive boyfriend. Ella gets so caught up in her work that the lines between reality and fantasy start to break down. Uh, the effects in this movie, overseen by director and co-screenwriter Robert Morgan, are appropriately grotesque and chilling. The use of model animation craft as a significant element of the film is is kind of an original idea. Its tedious manipulation and photography of characters might drive anybody nuts. So, you know, if you're actually making one of these things, imagine the man or woman hours. But it also allows for bizarre imagery and flights of fancy that can crash and burn. Stop motion, it stopped me uh, in my proverbial tracks. Even if it doesn't kind of reinvent the horror genre, I thought it was pretty well made. And I thought that uh, Franciosi is fantastic as the central figure. Stop motion is in select theaters. Wow. That's pretty wild as a premise and as a backdrop for story. So, well, interesting. Uh, here's an, here's another um, 
kind of crime thriller movie that's not particularly groundbreaking, but manages to be watchable. And its provenance is unlikely. Let me explain where it's from and what it's about. It has kind of a rough southwestern United States setting and all American characters. But Bring Him to Me is an Australian production with the number of Aussie actors in the cast. I believe it was shot in Australia. And the cast includes Sam Neill of Jurassic Park and Peaky Blinders and Rachel Griffiths of the HBO series Six Feet Under as Americans with the accents and everything. And by the way, both actors play criminal types. And like Andy McDowell, Griffiths plays a vicious queen of crime. Uh, no kings need apply. So mm. the main characters in Bring Him to Me are actually a veteran driver, as in getaway driver, played by Barry Pepper, who, to be uh, frank, is of North American uh, descent. And his comparatively naive passenger, uh, a novice to the crime game, played by uh, Jamie Costa, another American. So they're the uh, ringers in this bit of down under rolling thunder. And the plot hinges on the driver bringing the passenger to Griffith's mob lady boss after a caper goes awry. Thus, the title. Uh, there were some continuity issues here and there, but director Luke Spark and screenwriter Tom Evans seemed more concerned with the dynamic between the driver and the passenger and the mystery of what awaits them at the end of their journey. And with compelling performances from Pepper and Costa and those unlikely but uh, fun turns from Neil and Griffiths, it was tense and mysterious enough to carry Bring Him to Me as a decent B-movie crime drama. It's in select theaters and available on various streaming platforms. So two similar situations between that one and Red Right Hand. Of the two, maybe I liked Red Right Hand a little better, but they, they, neither of them wasted my time. I kind of enjoy that genre, so I kind of I mean, look at it. the poster. You see on the poster, those of you who are on YouTube, the, everybody's got a gun. I mean, it's like, you know, I get it. It's a crime club. It's just so wild to see, like, everybody in this shot, you know, holding a gun on each other. Uh, I guess that's, you know, it's a crime thriller. You have to expect that there are going to be weapons involved. It's just so wild to see uh, uh, everybody looks like a bad guy. <laughs> and, and everybody is a bad guy. Spoiler alert. All they're right. all well, bad guys, Mark. Very astute. Um, okay, I want to uh, wrap up the movie segment with a film that is one of my absolute favorites of the year and it basically of last year as well. Wait a minute. Where Eo, is that in theaters? The one we just saw the, um, I, the I, I told you in theaters and on various streaming platforms, bring, bring him, him to, to me. me. Okay. It's available Sorry. for your delectation, Mr. Thompson. All Thank right. You. Go ahead, sir. Let's get to the, the crown jewel of this weekend's films. EO Capitano. Uh, it, I believe, is nominated for an Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film, and it is powerful good. It's the work of the uh, terrific director and screenwriter, uh, a man uh, who has made some really, really cool movies. Uh, and one of them, uh, the guy's name is uh, Matteo Garone, and one of them, Gamora, is one of the best and coolest films ever about the modern-day mafia. Uh, and it's uh, absolutely worth seeking out. Uh, again, it's called Gamora. But this film is a total change of pace. Um, Io Capitano is the uh, odyssey of two Senegalese teenagers who want to leave what is, you know, comfortable but um, poverty in their hometown and travel illicitly all the way through the Sahara to um, Libya and then get a boat to Italy where they think there's going to be uh, work and money and a uh, degree of happiness and they're going to be able to send money back to their families, et cetera, et cetera. But this journey is some perilous stuff. Uh, they have to uh, deal with uh, faithless uh, and um, crooked uh, facilitators. They've got to pay money. They've got to like watch out for um, police and for bandits. Uh, and the stretch of desert they have to cross is absolutely brutal. And once they get to uh, Libya, to get out of Libya and cross the water and get to Italy is another massive challenge. And uh, it, it's brutal, it's grueling, it's powerful, it's uplifting. Um, Io Capitano uh, is actually absolutely worth your time, Mark. I know uh, there's subtitles and, you know, et no, cetera, I don't mind et cetera. Subtitles. I don't mind them. I, I just give you a hard time about them, but I don't mind them personally. 
Yeah, um, I have to say that uh, Sedu Sar and Mustafa Fall, who played the uh, the two cousins, Sedu and Musa, uh, they're uh, obviously uh, novices themselves, uh, amateurs. They deliver rich and affecting performances. Uh, it was draining, but fantastic. Uh, Io Capitano, high marks. What does the uh, and what what? So it's in Italian. Is that what you're telling me? No, it's in uh, Senegalese, French, and uh, Italian, but mostly it's in uh, Senegalese and Fr- or whatever the African dialect is in the particular uh, country that they're traversing. Wow, traversing all day. Go ahead. Yep. All right. Let's talk some TV because, uh, you know, uh, guys like um, Phineas I'll J. I'll mention uh, Kim may have to leave because she does another show. But we are going to continue, and I'll tell all our stations we are going to run just a few more minutes, and we won't yeah, we'll be to... much. It yeah. won't be much longer, but you know. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no rush on you. I just want to explain to everybody. So go ahead. Uh, anyway, yeah, I wanted to say that um, uh, we should get to some television stuff. Uh, audience, uh, uh, Mark Thompson fan, uh, audience member Phineas J. Whoopi was like, uh, "Have you seen Mister and Mrs. Jones, which is a TV version of the?" Um, movie that i believe starred uh uh angelina jolie and could it have been one of her husbands i think brad pitt might have been in it i you know i can't even it's been a while but they made a tv version that i have yet to watch i just want to apologize for not being johnny on the spot there but i do hear good things about mr and mrs smith what i have been watching and loving is the second season of tokyo vice which is on max it's set in tokyo japan circa 1999 and it is an engrossing and exciting series inspired by the actual experiences of u.s journalist jake uh, edelstein uh, when he covered the local crime beat for a japanese newspaper which means loads of cops and yakuza gangster action and more like hostess bars and Japanese noodle stands. There are gang wars, of course, and then there's newsroom infighting and romance mixed with that fish out of water aspect of an American living and working in Japan. Um, Michael Mann, who created Miami Vice uh, and was the director of Heat, Manhunter, and this past year's Ferrari is an executive producer. So, you know, Miami Vice, Tokyo Vice, I don't know. Doesn't matter. Uh, the renowned prestige TV director, Alan Paul, helms a number of episodes. Tokyo Vice has a top drawer ensemble led by Ansel Elgort, the guy who played the young Han Solo in the Star Wars movie. Sure. He plays Jake. And the great Ken Watanabe is his main police contact, Detective Kadajiri. I am deep into Tokyo Vice uh, Series 2. Um, here's a bit of a change of pace. On Apple TV, the new look debuted a week or two ago, uh, and it is about the decades-long rivalry between French fashion design icons Christian Dior and Coco Chanel. And that may sound like, you know, do I really care about high fashion? Well, their conflict on screen ranges from Nazi occupied Paris during World War II, uh, and that stuff is pretty exciting, uh, to the post war era when Dior's creative flair shook up the world of haute couture. Uh, it stars Ben Mendelssohn as Dior, uh, Juliette Binoche as Chanel, Maisie Williams, uh, tomboy Arya Stark from Game of Thrones, as you've never seen her playing a grown woman here, and in this case, uh, Christian's sister, Catherine Dior. John Malkovich is Dior's fashion mentor, Lucien Lelong. Emily Mortimer as the backstabbing, Axis-friendly socialite, Elsa Lombardi. And Klaus Bang as Nazi slicker spats. I am deep into the new look. Uh, and uh, I recommend it highly, even though it uh, again, you would think I don't. Do I really care about clothes designers? Oh, it's not about that. It's so much more. Um, I love it. I've heard actually at my poker game, which is nothing but guys. I've heard great things about this. So it's not like a, as you suggest, not some thing that you know just exists as a high fashion thing or spin on this. It's, I guess, really good as you say. So um, I'm, I mean. I would take just your word for it, but I'm suggesting I've also heard from others who are not even in the game who uh, seem to speak very highly of this as well. So I the new think, look. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Did you? Want to I think that you and Courtney would probably. Uh, it's one of the things you guys could hunker down together and watch. It's uh, there's something for everybody. Well, we watched ISS last night, and the only reason we watched it is because I want to watch it because of your review on ISS. 
And somebody else, I think, in the chat mentioned ISS. Now, and you mentioned it in your review that it's like, eh, it's okay, you know, and it, it gets there. And I agree. I thought your review was spot on, actually. But I love the premise of right. the world at war and the Russians and Americans. And they, I thought they play it in a layer, layered way. I have a lot of notes. Like, I wouldn't have had this scene where they had it. I would have run it much earlier in the movie, blah, 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 blah. But I thought... It, you know, it was it was uh, just because it was movie night last night. I thought I mentioned it, and you just mentioned movie night again. So here are some things that might qualify for movie night as well. Again, on television, you can watch it any time. The new look, Christian Dior and Coco Chanel going at it. And apparently it's filled, of, filled with both intrigue and great performances. Tokyo Vice is the Michael Mann executive produced offering now in season two. And Michael really recommends that. Io Capitano, he says it's a grueling but powerful and well worth it journey as these uh is it two of them they work a uh, journey to italy to uh, look for work two senegalese teenage cousins that want to kind of better their lives and uh bring money back home to uh, senegal by voyaging to italy and and you know finding and that's, their fortune again there. that's in theaters and a, maybe on a streamer somewhere um, it's going to be coming to theaters this weekend, select theaters, and uh, uh, I, eventually it'll be on streaming, I'm sure. And it is really uh, worth your time. It's the so best noted. Thing. Io Capitano, it's called. Bring Him to Me is the crime thriller. Everybody's got a gun. You don't know who's going to double cross who. Who's the good guy? Who's the bad guy? Sam Neill. Rachel Griffiths. Wow. I'm they're into all, it. They're all bad guys. What do you mean who's the good? It's they're degrees all of bad. bad. But who's it, badder than the other bad? That's the point. Thank you very much. And Stop Motion is the British horror movie with this uh, bizarre... That's called Bring Him to Me, by the way, the movie we just had. Stop Motion is the British horror movie that involves literally a stop motion animation house is it or uh no, what is it's it a, a, a young woman who wants to follow in her mother's footsteps as a stop motion animator but feels inadequate and uh you know anyway it's it does uh, it's the horrifying. Grotesque. uh there's it, it's grotesque in a good way all right he likes his horror there's red right hand orlando bloom looking jacked muscular a much different looking Handsome Orlando Bloom. That's no and, elf. <laughs> and Andy McDowell. She plays a crime boss. It's a brutal crime thriller. Cash is the name of Orlando Bloom's character. And Andy McDowell is the female crime boss. It's in theaters. Proceed at your own risk. He liked it. Though Michael liked Snyder liked it, I did. Uh, Andy McDowell gives maybe the most um, unlikely and impactful performance of her career. You know, as she's um, you know uh, getting on in, in age, she's still got incredible dignity. And wow, she just uh, imagine her as a as a sadistic uh, you know a Don of some sort, or Donette, or Donna, Donya. She's yeah. There's never been anything like this. And then finally, he started with Drive Away Dolls, the lesbian road picture, Margaret Qualley, who is the daughter of Andy McDowell, who you've just heard Michael lavish what? praise upon. He wishes that he could lavish praise upon Drive Away Dolls, probably, but he can't do it because uh. he is bound by the credo that informs his work car on this show. And he doesn't like drive away dolls with this great cast. I, Who's I in the will, cast again? I mean, everybody, I, everybody's I will, in the cast. I will see Margaret Qualley or uh, Geraldine Viswanathan in anything, and they do their jobs. They're quite good, and their chemistry is good. And you've got Matt Damon, Pedro Pascal, um, you know, uh, Beanie Feldstein, Bill Camp. Um, they weren't stinting on the supporting players. But it's sort of, you know. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. work. Drive away dolls in the end. 
drives away without us. Thank you. I just thought of that in the moment. I just, it was an ad lib. Thank you. Michael, we love that you checked in from San Francisco. Get back to that Brock Purdy, John Deere commercial that's going on behind you. Will do. Uh, Everybody have a great weekend, and we will check back with you uh, with Dune Part 2 next weekend. Oh, he can be read the Marina Times. He is called the Culture Blaster across social media, and he comes and goes on a rainbow. Bye-bye, Michael. Bye-bye. Warriors. Uh, go, Go Warriors. The fading cry of Go Warriors.